Hey everyone, have you ever wondered how to bypass an anti-cheat using V-cable swapping, VMT function pointer hooking, and more? Today, that is exactly what I'm going to explain in this video. First things first, let's go ahead and talk about what a V-table is, some concepts behind them, and then we'll get into the hooking and all the other fun stuff. So let's jump in. So the first thing you need to know is a V-table is just an array of function pointers. Now, knowing that information, as you can see here, any function that is defined as virtual right here in the base class, and I'll explain what that is in a second, it will be considered added into the virtual functions array. So currently the index of this function is zero because it's the first function. And as you know, in arrays in C++, it goes from zero, one, two, three, four, and goes up, whatever. So the first way to find the index is, well, first just by counting. And this is obviously zero because like I said, it's just the first and only function. But let's say you have more functions and you have the whole entity class reverse engineered. So you have talk one, talk two, whatever. You literally just count zero, one, two, three, and then it goes on. But for this scenario, zero is the index. But if you want to find out another way and you have the function address of the function that you want to call from the V table and you want to find out what index it is, it's pretty simple. So if we go here in Ida, I found the function pretty easily by going to the main function here and I found out this gets called and then I go here and as you can see hello from player and it's the same function now if you press x on this you'll want to go to the dq offset sub whatever you go here then you take this r data address right here then what you do is you use this function that I made or you can do it in the calculator you got to do it here so you go to programmer and you press hex, then you paste in that address, then you subtract the vtable start address, which is going to be right here, this one. So then you subtract that, then you divide by eight, and then subtract by one, and you get zero. And that's the function index. Now, if we look here, yep, that's correct. That's our function index right there. So the reason why we subtract those two addresses, then divided by eight, subtracted by one, is because first, this address here, like this value, this one is bigger than uh, the vtable start address here. So you don't want to do it the other way around and subtract the vtable start from the function part, right? So after that, you divide by eight. The reason you divide by eight, if you remember what I said earlier, I said that a vtable is just an array of function pointers. Now the size of a pointer is eight bytes. So that's why we're dividing by eight. Bytes. And then the reason why we subtract by one is because if we did, for example, eight divided by eight, like we did earlier, it's going to give us one, but that would be the wrong index. So we have to subtract by one. So it gives us the accurate index. So that's how you calculate the indexes in a V table. Now, what I'm going to explain to you is how player is derived from the entity class. Now, when I say derived, I mean that the player can access everything from the entity class and in the player class, we've overridden the talk function with our own one in the player class. So now what we can do is let's get an instance of the player. So we'll do player equals new player. Then we'll do player talk. Now, once we've called that function, as you can see, hello from player, blah, 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 whatever. Cool, works perfectly. Now, how do we call this function a different way? How do we call it using the vtable indexes like I just explained? Well, that's pretty easy. First, you need to get a pointer to the vtable. The way you get a pointer to the vtable is you do unit64t pointer vtable equals unit64t pointer pointer, and then just do player. And the vtable will always start at the class instance plus 0x0. Zero zero. So in this case, the class instance would be our player. And you just do 0x0, zero zero, or you don't have to, but I like to sometimes. And that's how you get the vtable. So now we can print that out. V table equals 0x percent LLX V table. And now since we know our function index, which is zero, we'll get that. We'll do 064t func function address table zero. And we use these brackets right here to dereference and get the index. So now we'll print out our function. Function equals 0x percent LLX. Now let's confirm that these are right. So let's start it up. And as you can see, it ends with 1070. And if we go back to Ida, 
it ends with 1070 as well. So we know we've got it right. Cool. Now what we can do is using all the stuff that we have here is we can actually call this function. So what we're gonna do here is just create our function prototype. So you can see it's just a void with no parameters. Now we're gonna do void asterisk talk then. Now this I'm gonna set that to zero then talk fn equals decal type talk fn function address should be able to just call it like that and there we go hello from player zero x f f f f f interesting why does it say that well there's something that i didn't tell you guys so if you noticed earlier in ida once we go to our function here and we press f5 you can actually see that it takes a pointer right here a const void pointer but here I'm not calling it with anything. So how does that work? Well, essentially what we just did is we just called the function without the this pointer. And the reason why that worked and didn't give us an access violation is because we're not modifying anything in this class. So for example, if I add a member called health, right? And then I try and modify it, health equals 100, start it up again, it's gonna give me an access violation. As you can see, it threw an exception because this was 0xFFF, it's not valid. So to fix that issue, all you'd have to do is just simply define void pointer here, and then you call talkfn with your class instance. In this case, it's our player. So now that we have that, we're gonna call that. And bam, it works perfectly fine. So that worked pretty well in our favor. But now, using all this information, we're gonna be able to do stuff like vtable swap and vmt function pointer hooking. So now that you understand what a vtable is and certain concepts around it, let's get straight into vmt function hooking. We swap out the function of index 0 with our hook, then we protect it with the old protections, and then we call the function again. One thing that I did forget to do is set the original function, so we'll do talk org equals decal type talk org, then we'll do vtable 0, and now we should be able to just call this up here in our hook this start that up perfect there we go it worked so as you can see what happened here is i called the function we already swapped out everything in here then when i called the function my hook got called first so it jumped to here it printed this text out yolo hook and as you can see the addresses are literally the exact same hello from player whatever so that's really all there is for VMT function hooking. It's very simple. It's not complicated at all in any way. Um, I mean, as you can see here, it literally takes like no lines of code either to do. So it's very simple. Um, so that's all there is for just VMT function hooking. Now VTable swapping is where it gets fun because it's way harder to detect for anti-cheat. So let's go over how this all works. First things first is we make a copy of the current VTable from the player. So we define our own variable here, static unit 64t, hook to vtable with a size of 4096. We copy the original vtable to our hooked vtable. We change the function index in our own vtable to our function hook, which is right here. We set the original to the actual function. Then right here, we swap out the vtable by just dereferencing this void pointer and then setting it to our vtable. Um, and you might ask, well, why don't you just do it uh, right here, why don't you just take this variable and put it there? Because when you're swapping out a variable or writing to a piece of memory, you're not, you can't just do v table equals zero x zero or another value. Um, since we're reading player plus zero x zero, we can literally just do this. Like this is the same thing. Player zero x zero equals hook to v table. So now when I start it up, you'll see that our function is there. Our hook is there. The original function gets called, and that's really it. So, other than that, guys, there's not really a huge explanation on how vtable swapping works. It's very simple. You just make a copy of the vtable, you set your own copy of the vtable function index to your hook, you set the original function, you swap out the vtable, that's it, and your hook is pretty silent. It's not noisy like patching the text section or protecting memory. Um, a few ways anti-cheats could detect this though is they can check the vtable pointer, see if it 
is in the game. If it's not, then you could get flagged for that. They could also check each individual function index as well in the V table. They can walk the whole V table and see if there's a function outside of the game, then they can flag you for that. So just keep those things in mind. But most of this is for educational purposes and for you to do your own stuff with an experiment, of course. So that's going to conclude our video, guys. So we'll go from there. So thanks for watching and have a good one.